Now, in this video, we will start a very important kind of language in query that is linked to SQL. In this particular video, what we will do, we will go to the SQL server, we will map one of the table or multiple table of a particular database onto the link to SQL classes. Basically, the process in which we map the database table in a C-sharp or VB.NET class is called object relational mapping in which the table of the database will be mapped as a class and the fields, the columns of the particular co table will be mapped as the properties of the class. Once we are done with that, we can start making the query as we used to do in the previous scenarios. But obviously, the process before of that is quite different, which I'll show you in the practical implementation. Now, whenever you write a basic SQ, uh, link query, so obviously your link query will look like this. Suppose there is a query like where I want to get the company name in the, uh, of all those companies where, who are located in the London. So this is the query which I will write in link, but accordingly to SQL Server, we will have to write pass this. So link to SQL will actually translate the link query into the SQL query. And whatever the data this SQL server will return, it will be mapped as the object will having some properties inside it. So in this video, we will see how to make the basic operations like the object relational mapping and then how to start working with the data retrieval. In our next video, we will also cover like how can we perform the crude operation that is the DML operation along with the data retrieval. So let's start with the basic data retrieval and the object relational mapping in this video. So for starting the implementation of link to SQL, first of all we will have to go for object relation mapping in which we will map the database tables having the columns to the C sharp classes having the properties. That means the table of database will be mapped here as a C-sharp class and the columns of the table will be mapped as the properties of the class. So for starting that, what we will do, I'll come to the solution explorer, we'll right click over my project and we'll add a new element, new item that is linked to SQL classes. And here you can see there is something called data classes dot dbml so that will be the name here let's say add and as soon as i will add that since it is a code file it will contain some c sharp classes so it is asking us for creating a folder called app underscore code from inside which it will create the c sharp class so i say okay and here you will get a folder with the name app underscore code inside which you will find these data classes dot dbml and the dependent files. Now for starting the mapping what I'll do I'll come to the server explorer where first of all I will have to add some data connections by right clicking here say add connection which will make a connection with my database server. So here I will choose the SQL server which is my target database. Apart from that you can also choose these ones uh, but yes uh, for link we will always recommend the Microsoft SQL Server only. So here's the provider. Now say continue. You'll have to enter the server name out here. So server name is basically a name of the machine where you have installed the SQL Server. So in my case, I have my current machine. So either I can go for the full name or I can just pass the dot symbol which will point to my current system. After that, the authentication for which you can go for the Windows or SQL Server. So here if Windows will be chosen, it will not ask any username and password if the same user has made the installation of SQL Server. And you can also go for the SQL Server authentication. If you are not really aware of these things, you can simply refer to the SQL Server video tutorial series. Here I will enter username and password which I have for my system and then after, since a server can have multiple databases, I will go for the database which, with which I want to work. So my DB is the name of my database. Just to check, I'll click on test connection which will say that I succeeded and then say OK. So as soon as I will do that, here in the data connection, you will find something 
tutorials point that is the name of the system dot my db that is the name of my database so let's expand this tree and here you will see all the views to procedures tables have been loaded all right so now you can simply choose the table with which you want to work so here as i'll choose tbl employees and tbl departments if you want you can just rename the class name because now this one will be your class name and these are all the properties so if i want i will just make a change like for the class name i don't want tbl keyword so i will just change that in both the places all right so now this mapping has been done in which the class name is employee the class name is department and these are the fields if you want to perform any dml operation in our coming video as we will do so make sure that they contain a primary key else you will not be able to so let's save the changes and let's see what all we are getting now so here you will find something called data classes dot designer dot cs means all the c sharp related code will be done right here so here what you can see is first of all i have a class with the name data classes data context which is being derived from the link class data context so basically this class will allow us for reading and writing any data for with the database as here you will get the different constructors some in some you can pass the connection string or maybe an interface instance of the connection but anyhow using this particular class you will be able to make a connection and right after that you will get a couple of properties couple of properties that is the employees and departments is the name of the property which are actually the read only property means they only have the get we can only read them so what will they give us they will give us the get table means they will give us the table data for employees and department all right as the return type of these properties are of table type itself so basically we will use these tables in order to make any read operation with the database so now let's see further what is here in this particular file so here you will find that employee is a class right here now which is being mapped from dbo.tbl.employees that's the name of a table but as there itself i renamed my table with the name sorry i renamed my class with the name employee so here you can see the employee table sorry employee class with the private properties private variables and public properties so now here you can see emp id these are basically the column names all right so the storage will be done in this particular variable int not null primary key true because in the database i have set emp id as the primary key similarly you will get all the columns defined in such a way like first name last name mobile number gender means whatever columns are there that they will simply be mapped similarly we do have a class here after that called department for which again we will do the very same process so basically now i have the class with which i can start working so for starting the work what i'll do i'll just add one web page with default aspx and as in the previous videos i did i will add one grid view in this particular table in this particular page so that i can see the output now coming here what i'll do i already have added a class here with the name data classes data context so this will be instantiated for the first time so context is the name of the instance is equal to new data classes data context so as we know this is the class which collects which contains the couple of properties which we can use for reading all right that is employees and departments so let's say if i want to retrieve the employees data so what i will do is var result is equal to now my typical link syntax will be started like from emp in dc 
no, sorry not DC it's context object from co in context dot employees all right so what it will do as this property that is this employees property right here in this CS page let me come to that so here's my employees property which is returning me a table of employee type so basically it is helping me to read the data so this is the property now which I am talking to and then I will do a select statement where I will select all the columns from it so it will be like select asterisk from TBL employees which I have done here after the mapping in link so let's set the data in the grid view like data source is equal to result and then I'll bind the data so let's execute so here you can see like all the columns with their correct name have been here and all the records are also here alright so this is how you can make a simple query and now after this if you want to do anything new here like putting the condition uh, making any operator we have already covered all the operators so you can simply start working with them with the way you were doing earlier for example if you want to pass a condition you will just say where emp dot gender is equal to m so single quotes then this and now double equals to also so let's execute it so you can see all the male employees are here in the output so similarly you can use any of the operator which we have used in the previous videos of language integrated query but as far as the link to SQL that's the main most important kind of link is here we will start working with that like the mappings so this is about the retrieval as I said you can use any operator for a customized retrieval in the next video we will see how to perform the DML operations with the link